This is the third in our three-part webcast series. Today we'll be discussing end-to-end -end production optimization. At 2020, we focus on creating a software platform that empowers our consumers, designers, retailers, and manufacturers to create and deliver personalized projects. Our goal is making an integrated end-to-end -end solution where enriched product data flows from start to finish. Manufacturing Operations Management. 2020 Insight provides a complete manufacturing operations management solution for furniture, cabinet, and wood product manufacturers. Our solution includes dedicated tools to manage and automate everything in the factory, from order acceptance and engineering, configuration to production scheduling, CNC integration, manufacturing, billing, and shipping. Let's take a look at how the end-to-end -end solution provided by 2020 can add value to your operations. 2020 Design provides space planning and design. Dealers can design quickly and easily with manufacturer-specific catalogs. Twenty Twenty Design also provides the ability for visualization. Dealers can make sure their customers know exactly what they're buying with stunning photorealistic renderings that are fast and easy to produce. The combination of 2020 catalog content and 2020 design allow dealers to specify and quote using up-to-date and accurate product information from an unparalleled selection of manufacturer's content. The data then flows seamlessly into 2020 Live Order, where dealers can communicate order details. The dealers can connect directly to suppliers and manufacturers. Next is the information mapping process from 2020 Live Order to 2020 Insight. We can see that manufacturers can divide, uh, define relationships between order entry specifications and bill of material and engineering data. And we can see also that 2020 Insight provides a many products to one unique engineering model. Twenty Twenty Insight provides for processed manufacturing data. Manufacturers can actually process standards and specials in the same way, using parametric construction-based engineering rules. Additionally, with Twenty Twenty Insight, Manufacturers can schedule and manage production with real-time knowledge of order demand and factory performance from cutting and machining, nesting and edge banding, through finishing. Twenty Twenty Insight closes the loop by providing manufacturers with an ability to schedule and manage production with real-time knowledge of order demand and factory performance, including assembly, staging and loading, shipping, and even on-site installation management. Today's discussion will be end-to-end -to -end production optimization. Imagine, if you will, automatically validating and processing dealer orders from manufacturing with little or no manual intervention. Imagine eliminating double data entry. Imagine generating CNC programs to create custom cabinets the minute the order crosses your door. In this webcast, we'll talk you through how you can automate data processing for manufacturing, starting with the data you already have. Our presenter today is Jorg Braun. Jorg has worked in the industry for over 15 years uh, with woodworking industry experience in locations throughout the world. 
The org has managed ERP implementations and led a team of professional engineers and consultants. Additionally, York has supported companies in system architecture development, business process analysis, re-engineering, lean, and synchronous flow. York is currently engaged in partner programs at 2020 and is a member of the extended executive team. Join me in welcoming Jorg Bronze. Thank you, KJ. So what we want to do today is going away a little bit from the whole PowerPoint situation where everything is predefined. And we would like to show you a way uh, on how a dealer enters an order, how this order can be transferred then to the manufacturer with one set of data, basically. And then uh, processing this order with the help of engineering information uh, all your rules which you have in place at your company and move then the work orders through the shop floor, look at inventory purchasing and uh, all the way down to the invoice and the installation. So let me start with this um, when we say we are in a in a store where a designer uses 2020 design. So in here, the designer will go ahead and design the kitchen. It's just a simple layout here. And when we look a little bit closer at one of these cabinets, um, we, for an example, pick here a B15L with some uh, features. I have a width, I have a depth, I have a height, maybe I have species, door style. And as you know, an endless possibility of options here. So as I said, uh, let's take a chance here with a B15L and give this one some values, 15 inch wide, depth is 24 for an example, and the height is 34. Um, I have different options on species and for an example, door style. Just for, uh, to make it a little bit uh, less complicated, I choose uh, maybe three different kind of door styles and I pick here number one. <clears throat> so what happens now when the dealer has confirmed the entire order, what they do is they, they take the order and move it to um, an, an output file and in this case, it could be an XML file. And from here, we will send then this information to the manufacturer, which has, for an example, 2020 insight in place. <clears throat> so now when we send this information to the manufacturer, um, we have also the possibility that we automatically import this one into an order. And the order number could be uh, one, two, three, for an example. So when we do that, um, as I mentioned, uh, we, we can send an XML file, but we can also use uh, basically the web where a bi-directional communication can happen between the dealer and the manufacturer. So that's our live order tool. <clears throat> um, our live order tool, or the other possibility is just emailing the information to the manufacturer. At this point in time, I want to point out that it's very important to understand that um, on one side, we have our, our SQL database here, where the data sit on the manufacturing side, and parallel to this one, we have the matching data in our, let me draw it like this here, um, in our price book, in our catalog, which is obviously also um, somehow in the, in the database. <clears throat> so these data are matching each other. Means if I enter an order, um, and for an example, if I take this B15L, this one 
comes now in my order lines at, at some line in into the order and it comes in with exactly the same information as I have created in my in my order on the dealer side. So here I have 15 inch, uh, 24, 34. Here I have a selection and here I have my selection one. So if I go now as a dealer in my order and I say, you know what, that doesn't really work and fit in my, uh, my layout. Uh, I need the width to be only 40, but I don't have a 14 inch uh, cabinet. So I take the B15, cut it down to 14. Now, when I, when I export the information and import this one into the order, inside will automatically change the value on the manufacturing side to 14 inch. So no additional data entry is required here. Um, it, it happens automatically once the dealer makes a change on the order. At the same time, when the manufacturer progresses the order, advances into another status, an update will also be sent back to the dealer. So what we want to do now is have a little closer look um, when I have an order now in my system and I want to go a little bit more in detail and see what happened on the engineering side. So on the engineering side, um, I have basically an engineering model. I use exactly the same kind of format here again uh, with my width, depth, height, species, door style, and I get some values in here automatically. Um, when I use my B15L, which is probably mapped to this, let's call it a B engineering model, which is fully parametric. Um, also my B15R, maybe my B21, oops, sorry, um, and so on. They're all linked to the same engineering model. <clears throat> what that means is at this point in time, I have a kind of maximum bill of material where I have the breakdown of the box here, and then I have different kind of front styles, for example. So based on certain rules, I decide now um, when somebody enters the B15L, I find this B with all these values here at this point in time, then find me out of my maximum bill of material, the box, and a certain front. Everything else will disappear. It's something which I don't need. And when I have the first level of the bill of material, then I can go uh, lower into uh, different components, for an example, a, a gable um, or a, a panel, and uh, th this panel can be broken down into a raw one, with, this should be edge material, um, and the huge plywood where I, or sheet material where I cut these out. So what happened now is once I have my sales order in the system and change and, and I have imported the sales order directly from my um, designer or from my showroom. And I just change the status of the order. The system will automatically generate me the bill of material. Since the bill of material works in a way like having individual components, and these components are working beside each other. For an example, when I have uh, a left panel and an adjustable shelf, now during the bill of material generation process, these parts will be moved together. And when I have certain connectors, that these should be dowels here, assigned to one of these components, then through this matching where they are located with each other, 
the system finds automatically where I need to do drilling. Or if I have a front um, on the left side, I mean, this one is probably the right uh, right cable, um, so it's the wrong side, but any of for purpose of uh, visualization here, um, uh, the hinges and then uh, the door and so on. So at the same time, when I create the bill of material, the system will also generate the final CNC codes for all my parts which need to do machining. So all of this information now, um, the, the bill of material and the CNC information will be pushed um, will be pushed behind my original B15L. And from here on my manufacturing tool side, I go now into the individual steps, uh, starting with scheduling and so on. For that, I open a new page. So we have the part with the scheduling. And then once I um, schedule an order, and I can do this in, in certain different ways, um, I can have um, one sales order, I can have multiple sales orders together in a batch, I can um, rip certain sales orders apart and put them in individual batches. Um, so it, it's really up to you. You have certain kind of rules within your company on how you manage and uh, for best yield grouping certain orders together on the scheduling side. And inside will will definitely support that. So after the scheduling, it will go into the shop floor. And when we look at the shop floor side here, for an example, we start with the uh, with a panel saw. Then uh, at some point in time, we have maybe an edge bender. Um, we have the machining site somewhere. We have the assembly, uh, packing, and so on. So once an order comes now um, through scheduling into the shop floor, what the system does, it it uh, optimized based on your um, panel optimizer software, um, which, uh, which 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 individual parts you have. Um, and what Insight also does at the same time, um, a panel will be will be cut. It spits out uh, a little label. And what we do here is basically, if I go back here, so um, as I said, the system generates a CNC code uh, for an individual part. So this, this part has a, a unique identifier, and we attach this already to the part, so that once uh, the, the person at the panel saw cuts the the part out of the sheet, we will add this certain barcode right away on the label, and you can identify if it's a small label or you want to stick on the side or somewhere on the board. Um, anyhow, this label will be important later if the part travels then from the edge bender to the CNC assembly and so on, all the way down to my to my shipping area, where I then load it into the truck. But it could also be that I have certain parts who go only to the CNC assembly and then there, or they go from the panel saw directly to packing and so on. So there are different ways uh, on how the parts travel through the plant. And that is something which we control through routings. So the routings define where each part needs to travel through. And each part can, can travel through different kind of scenarios. For an example, if I have um, a part which can be machined on CNC1 or on CNC2, based on if a machine is down or if I have certain rules that certain sizes only go to a certain CNC machine, um, the, the, the routing is also parametric basically behind each part, saying if certain conditions are true, the part will travel a certain way through the shop. If 
certain rules are not true, then it would probably travel through a different path. And what's very nice at this point in time is that everyone, the supervisor or somewhere else, either on a PC or on, uh, on, an, uh, on an iPad, uh, you have the possibility to look into these individual work standards and get an update. So you have full visibility in, uh, in your shop. And this visibility helps you later, when I draw this back here, to make smart decisions on how to schedule the next orders. So coming now from, from the shop floor, as I said, uh, the, the parts are traveling all the way through. Uh, every time, let's say I do a scan of, of a barcode, <clears throat> I can either hear, I can either call the CNC program or call something and the system does backflush of material. For an example, when I have all my uh, wood components for the assembly and I need my hardware and I scan them that, that everything is assembled, the system will automatically reduce inventory at certain locations. So the system will give you an inventory update and based on consumption and um, what your reorder points are, uh, safety stock and so on, the system will right away make a suggestion for purchasing. So the buyer can go into the purchasing module and see right away or get the notification uh, right away on which kind of information uh, do I have here and then make a decision, um, buy it or wait it, or combine different suggestions together to release them uh, to the vendor. Uh, once the material um, has been shipped from the vendor, we receive it. And then basically when we receive it, we put this back into inventory. So that's the kind of loop which runs all the time within the system. I schedule something um, based on what I have in, in work orders, what I have in inventory, uh, I release it in the shop floor, I scan it, I update inventory, I make suggestions directly for the buyer, the buyer purchase, I receive it. Once I receive it, at this point in time, I can uh, do a three-way match of the invoice. So basically I'm comparing my uh, PO, my receiving and the invoice for my vendor and all of this information um, go, go then into accounts payable. <clears throat> and on the other hand, um, I'm, I'm planning then my, my shipping once I have completed everything and load the truck, get all my, all my paperwork here for the truck and create an invoice. And basically with the invoice, we send this information to accounts receivable. Uh, furthermore, at this point in time, either after the invoice or um, earlier during, during this, this, this process, um, I have the possibility scheduling an installation order. So what that means is that I can either have part of the kitchen, entire kitchen and so on, um, that has an installation order related to my sales order. And this will be made available through the web again for my contractors. The contractors can go in into a website and can either decide, I, I pick this order, yes, I want to do it, it fits in my schedule, then they accept it or they don't. Uh, or you have internal installers where you push this to them and they have to accept, for an example, the certain uh, installations. You can also schedule certain tools, like if they need a certain drill or something else uh, out, out of inventory, which they have to take to their to their place where they install the kitchen. All of those information <clears throat> can be added to the installation order. So 
with that, <clears throat> I'm basically at the end of uh, of this presentation. I um, wanted to stress the point one more time uh, that the the data between the manufacturer and the, the catalog are matching each other. That means every time I'm doing a change on one side, it will update the other side. Jörg, I want to thank you for the presentation. This was an excellent overview. We have a few questions that came in during the presentation. The first is, can can our designers use live order with 2020 insight only? Yes. Um, there is a possibility in live order that you, you can manually enter um, an, an order to a certain degree. Um, it's it, it basically it's recommended to use 2020 design as well. It's not like a quick order entry tool. Um, we're enhancing this one right now um, so that you have the full flexibility and you don't need to uh, use 2020 design. Um, at, at this point in time, if you would purchase this one today, you would have to go with 2020 design, live order, and then inside. So uh, that the original order gets created in 2020 design. Thank you. The, the next question is, uh, it's actually a two-part question. The first part is, is parametric modeling unique to 2020? It is unique to a certain degree. I mean, other companies do that as, as well, but not as, uh, as intense like 2020 does because we are only focusing on the uh, woodworking industry. So um, I, I know that, for an example, if you go bigger, like, like Oracle has also a configurator, but uh, it, it will not work in, uh, we have seen this several times, uh, I will not work in an environment, uh, uh, in, in our environment, uh, in, in a woodworking site, because it is not just that you have a configurator where you say, I have these kind of width, depth, height, um, it, it's also the combination of the individual features with each other. For example, somebody selects a species, then only certain door styles are, are available. And then based on this combination, only certain finishes available. And based on out of these three-way combination, for an example, I find a certain price group, which determines the price later on for my cabinet. So the, this is really unique in our industry, in the woodworking industry. And um, I would say that, that 2020 is pretty unique in, in supporting that. Very good. You may have already anticipated the second part of the question from the way you responded to the first part, but it was, do you have any idea how much time this saves in developing models on a one-to-many basis? Yeah, we did some studies with existing customers. and. Basically, if you would create every single possibility in AutoCAD and um, let's say a, a B15L and then you have this unique code behind it which specifies exactly this kind of model uh, versus parametric. First of all, we've seen that you probably save 80% of your data you have uh, currently if you work on a SKU base. So um means 20% less um, sorry, 20% of data you have remaining later on uh, within your system. Uh, the, the, the other bigger advantage even is if you do um, changes on your models. For example, if you have something skew based in, let's say, an, an AutoCAD, and uh, for some reason you want to change your drawer slides from Heading to Bloom, uh, that means uh, maybe different drilling is acquired and so on. <clears throat> So what you do is you have to go in every single AutoCAD drawing and make a change uh, with a new uh, draw slide. Uh, on, on our system, you go into the engineering model and basically um, go in one of the sub-assemblies, say, I want to change this draw slide to a completely different one. And then all of a sudden, uh, where, wherever the sub-assembly is located in, in all the other uh, bill of materials, it will make the change. Uh, automatically, 
It will also publish at the next bill of material generation, uh, publish the exact new CNC code for drilling. Because the system knows on uh, when it generates the bill of material on where the connectors are and how they look like, and then provides the drilling information for your whatever you have, a home -make machine or a BSM machine or whatever. Excellent. Thank you for that. It sounds like if I'm uh, if I'm developing models or if I'm developing CNC code, this is going to save me a, a great deal of time in my in my operations. Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, the next question is, does the Insight application handle both frameless and framed cabinets? Yeah. Uh, Insight does. Uh, we don't have any, um, um, how would say, um, differences between um, frameless and uh, face frame cabinets. It, it's just that uh, two sets of data need to be created. So it's, for an example, if I have a bill of material uh, of a of a of a box. Um, in, in my uh, frameless, I cannot use these components in, in my other one. So it, it's just that I basically have a second set of data, um, one for frameless, one for face frame. But all the configuration rules, all the parametric, all the CNC information works exactly, exactly the same. I don't have any other questions, uh, but I noticed that the final screen that you have is relative to uh, any additional questions we may have in the future, or uh, actually uh, the attendance at IWF this year in Atlanta. What can you tell us about that, Jorg? Well, we will be present at the IWF in Atlanta. Uh, if you are there, um, contact either, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, manufacturing sales, or send an email to our inside support, <clears throat> and either way, uh, they can schedule meetings with you. Uh, I will be at the at the show, so will be my colleagues. And um, the, the best is always scheduling appointments with us. Uh, even if you have certain certain topics, we can prepare to show you these certain topics and go deeper into it. Uh, if you want to more have more information about certain modules of of our solution and how they interact with each other, uh, or if you are a customer and you want to get an update on what's new and what's coming, uh, please feel free to, to schedule any meetings with us. If you're not at the show, um, contact us and uh, we will get back to you uh, via phone and we can always schedule a WebEx session with you uh, in, in private so that we can um, go a little bit deeper in certain areas. Excellent. Well, once again, I want to thank you, uh, Jorg, for the uh, the excellent overview. It was certainly high level enough so that everyone got a very good flavor for the end-to-end -end optimization capabilities 2020 can provide with their suite of applications. Uh, we want to thank you as well for uh, the overview of the manufacturing operations management capabilities within 2020 Insight. And I want to thank everyone who's in participation uh, on this call. Uh, we appreciate you taking your time. We know that that's your most valuable commodity. Uh, we thank you for your time, your attention, and your consideration. And we look forward to future calls and opportunities when we can spend some time with you. Look forward to future uh, co communications relative to our next series. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you for your time and for your attendance.